it know? changes too, right? Like, you know, day one, you don't have any rental properties that are paying mm-hmm. you cash flow. You don't have a real yeah. estate brokerage that's profitable every single month. You right. don't have all these things working, right? Yeah. And you did all those things on day one to get to that point to where you didn't have to mm-hmm. work 18 hours every single day. The hustle changes. Yeah. yeah There's no more garage sales. Yeah. But yeah. now, you know, I might be locked to my computer. You know, I'm still hustling. It just looks differently. $200,000 deals. Yeah, yeah. It just looks a little different. to go all right angie yeah. Hello. thanks for coming thank you thanks yeah. for having me uh so the name of our show is the real estate podcast that's we, original market. yeah i was uh-huh. surprised because yeah. we had a, a previous one uh, young guy financially free and somehow the real estate podcast was not taken and we didn't oh. we didn't get it that long ago okay so it's pretty cool i wow. think it's the whole podcast as the, the real estate podcast instead of like the real estate show or whatever it may be. Right, okay. So we're trying to, uh, uh-huh. you know, get as Is much Is that the explore. website? Do you have a website for it? No website. Real estate podcast. Uh, okay. It's a good idea, though. We should. Yeah, is it taken? Better? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find Shoot, out. Shoot, don't, don't tell anyone. I know, right? Uh, but thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, Quick, it's, quickly get it and then yeah, sell it get to it you guys. Quick, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so easy going. We like to just talk real estate, okay. um, anything else. But I don't know if... if uh, we ever really talk too much about your background that much. Okay. So yeah. we'd love to hear, um, cause you got a pretty big business now. Yeah. Stepstone. Yeah. And, Stepstone uh, Realty. Stepstone yeah. Realty. Uh, how many agents? Ooh, we're getting close to 290. 290 uh-huh. agents. Yeah. That's a lot of agents. It's a lot um, of agents. And it's a cool, unique, uh, uh-huh. structure. So we'd love to kind of, uh, backtrack. Okay. Um, as much as you want to talk about, but kind of, what your life's looked like until this point, really. Uh huh. What my life looked like. <laughs> like where you were born, you know. Uh-huh. Where look, I was born, yeah. even. Oh, man, yeah. we're going way back. Yeah. All the way back. All right. Well, day one. Way back when, Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas. I was born, yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Grew up in Waco, Texas. Um, then I spent a few years in Washington State going to school. Okay. Came back to Texas as soon as I possibly could. So Good. settled in to Austin. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, my husband Dan and I, uh, well, we came back to Austin because he was in political um, consulting. So he did that for a while, um, got bored of working for other people. If you ask him, he'll say he watched uh, the movie Office Space and immediately decided he needed to change his life. Uh, so, when, he, when he told me that, uh-huh. when we had uh, lunch oh, that yeah, one day, right? I, I thought that that was a, uh-huh. a great story. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it at the time while we were watching it, but then all of a sudden he started to bring home library books. Way back when you went to the library and actually checked out books, he would do that and bring home books on real estate investing and um, I pretty much ignored what he was doing and we had a little, little one at the time. And, uh, so, uh, so he, uh, sort of, well, the firm he was working for kind of dissolved. So it was a good time for him to jettison out of that career. Um, and he started doing lease purchases. Mm-hmm. I had a job, so I was the one with the paycheck and the health insurance and stuff what like kind of that. Job? Um, I ran a, uh, at a, a physical therapy clinic so you know medical office management kind of thing here in uh, in Austin. Austin yeah it was called sports center um, it was a pretty cool pretty nice. cool job um, my first job out of college was as a crisis intake specialist for a mental health organization mm. that was a lot of fun I like, loved that, that job suicide yeah like suicide or uh, a lot of um, people with drug problems mm. going through withdrawal and stuff like that. I loved that. Job. I've got this random story. This happened last night. Um, this, guy, <laughs> this guy that I know, uh, called me at like nine 30 at night and he said, uh, Hey man, uh, you're the last, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of someone. I don't know who else can help me. I tried to commit suicide like uh, 20 days ago. Oh, I just wow. got out. I need somewhere to stay. And I was like, well, I got an RV in my backyard. Oh, I'll wow. leave it out unlocked. And so he came last night. My wife's like, 
what are you doing? Yeah. I was like, hey. Somebody needs And she's something. like, are you sure that this mm. guy's not going to do anything bad? I'm like, no, I'm not uh, sure. I'm, I, like, yeah. I can't be sure, but this feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, so... So did you know him? I'm sorry, maybe. I'm yeah, okay. I did know. I don't know him that well. Okay. Like I really don't. Yeah. Um, and he's <laughs> he's texting me right now. Yeah. And I'm like, hey man, like I can give you a couple of days for sure. Yeah. So, anyways, well, that literally happened last night at like 9:30. Well, that's really nice. I'm glad you had a space. For yeah, it's him. nice to have that RV. Yeah. Back there. It's it's weird times for people right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of stress. So. so I'm sure you dealt with a lot. Yeah, of... I loved that job. I loved that job. But uh, yeah, but when uh, so when Dan really jettisoned out with the uh, real estate investing, um, he, you know, at lunchtime, we'd be talking on the phone and be like, Angie, you need to leave your job. You need to start a business. You know, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like, what business am I going to start? And um, so uh, more and more, you know, we talked about it. He knew, you know, he he really wanted me to get my license just so he could use me, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... Uh, Why did he not want to get his license? You know, that's a really good question. I don't know at the time um, why he didn't get his license. He was working with... Um, uh, she was my first broker. Her name was Stephanie Johnson. And so, um, I don't know. Maybe you'll have to ask him. He was just too he busy. He can be your next guest, I guess. He was just too busy closing deals. He I was guess like, so. Someone needs to be in class. I'm a... Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, and then uh, depending on who you ask, I was either fired or quit from that job. So that was a great time. I was like, you know what? Maybe I will get my real estate license. So got my license in 2006. Um, started Stepstone Realty immediately as an LLC brokerage. And so Stephanie, who I'd mentioned before, she was uh, the broker for that company. But I've always owned Stepstone. Um, I don't know if that was the best choice now that I look back at it. It was expensive to um, own an LLC brokerage because it's like twice the fees when you don't have your broker's license. Um, but did that in 2006, got my broker's license in 2009. Um, we really, uh, just plugged along me and Dan for ages. Um, just the two of us, the broker, maybe I had one or two friends on the brokerage with us. Um, he had a business partner for a while. They were the dads by houses, um, for a good amount of time and, uh, it worked out, it worked out. We did a lot of short sales as you can imagine. Um, we did some stuff with mobile homes like we would hustle like anything everything because we didn't have uh you know a job (laughs) essentially we had a kid and we would hustle it wasn't it wasn't always easy you know Uh, we did a lot of real estate but on the weekends um literally we would go to garage sales buy stuff and then sell it on ebay that's when ebay was real big and you could just sell anything on there and that's how we would spend our weekends to get our grocery money that Um, is hustle yeah it was really hustle yeah the kid was all into it too you know do you remember do you remember if there was ever like a really big find that y'all found at a garage sale that was just a huge ebay sale golly i don't remember anything real particular but we did get really good at knowing what people would buy those back massagers that you put on the back of the chair and stuff mm-hmm. those were <laughs> you'd always sell those but yeah coffee don't... mugs uh do you know who gary v is gary v yeah he is, maybe not he's like a, a motivational kind of okay. public figure uh-huh. and he's a straight hustler and yeah. he's been filming going to garage sales oh okay it's like look and he like gets all into and he's like uh, multi multi-millionaire yeah but he still loves it good and he'll go buy something for four dollars and sell it for 12 right yeah and he's like look you can, anyone can make money you just you gotta know, get out it, and wake up early you gotta be the first one at the garage sale right to, to get, get the, the prime pickings get the good stuff yeah we were we were serious about it we and uh but it worked and it taught us a lot um a good thing about being poor is we we quit smoking cigarettes at that time because we couldn't that's afford good. them. That's good. So, uh, yay, 15-ish years, right. I guess. Congrats. Uh, free of cigarettes. Good. But, uh, good. you know, nothing like necessity um, will give you the motivation to do stuff. But um, but we did, you know, it, eventually we, we, you know, started to, to be able to go away from our garage sales and actually make money doing real estate. Sell the house now. Selling Buy houses, the house. Were you thinking about houses. real estate at the time? When you were uh, doing the garage sales? Were you- well, we were kind of doing the garage sales at the same time as we were doing the real estate. Were you so. talking to the garage sale people about you their know, house? You know, sometimes, yeah, we would talk to them. You know, even now, I don't do garage selling a lot, but I've definitely taken my card when I do go garage selling to see if I can, you know, hey, you're selling or whatever. Um, 
So that's a good, yeah, for new agents, that's a good place. Real estate, uh, garage sales to pick up clients. Another new, another tip I've got for you, dog park. Dog park. Dog park. I've yes. never heard of this. I Well, I became a dog mom about a year and a half ago. And we go there on the dog park and you see the same people every time. The people with the big dogs who live in apartments are there every day day because I got to get those big dogs out of the apartments hmm. and now I'm not the the realtor for my dog park because there was already one there but she's already got like three or four sales because you get to know these people they all need houses so how'd you know there was already Dorian's one there gonna love this. say what how'd you know there was already one there well she's loud and she tells everybody she's a realtor <laughs> I'm sorry Nancy she knows she's, I'm sorry, Nancy. she's but yeah she uh you know everybody who walks in what are you you buying a house but yeah she's all over it so i don't step on her toes i don't step on her toes um well you can be her broker i could be her (laughs) broker yeah i'm actually friends with her broker her broker is a local local lady in kyle so i wouldn't do that either but you know the the small dark park is up up for dibs um i don't think there's a realtor on the small side but i'm more of a big dog kind of girl so that is a cool tip yeah i've been doing this for uh 10 years now, 11 yeah. years. I've never heard anyone say anything about get this. A, get a big dog. Go hang out at the dog park. Go get some Do clients. you have to go there with the dog or can you just mingle with you know the big what? dogs? As a dog park person, I can tell you that people are going to look at you weird if you're there without a dog. <laughs> just, just conversing. Like, around. Uh, yeah. So there's a, I don't know what's going on now, but uh, with COVID and everything, but there is a dog park in Austin where you can have uh-huh. drinks. Oh, okay. And this girl that I used to work with, uh, we we went there and just had a couple of drinks and watched uh-huh. the dogs. Yeah. And it was fun. Sometimes like, people come and watch the dogs. We're just watching dogs, having some drinks. This is pretty cool. It's so fun. Yeah. We take our we take our camp chairs and you take a little cooler and you mm. sit there. People socialize. The dogs socialize. Everybody wins. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's great. So. Great tip. Yeah. So dog park. Um, let's see. So, oh yeah. So just kind of what I was talking about our history. Yeah. We just hustled. You know, I, I realized, um, when we went to these seller meetings, um, we were always looking for an investment opportunity. We always wanted to buy, but, um, by having my license, a lot of times, if it wasn't a good opportunity for us to buy or invest in, I was able to kind of switch gears and offer them listing services or do a short sale or something. And year over year, when we would look at our income, a third of our income would come from real estate commissions. And I never, ever marketed myself as a real estate agent, never sent out the postcards or the calendars or it just occurred from our, our distressed seller marketing. I was making that money. So to us, it seemed like a no brainer. Like if you're investing, get your real estate license. In addition to the tools and the benefits and the knowledge, maybe the credibility that you get, um, you get leads, you know, you can, you can monetize more leads and that leads are expensive, right? Have y'all heard? So I know I've heard it a lot, but a lot of investors who don't have their real estate license feel like the real estate license will prohibit them from doing certain things or, you know, uh, cap them from being able to make as much money or get as many deals. And I personally don't think that's the case. And I've never run into a distressed seller who Mm -hmm. did not want to sell to us or me because we own a real estate brokerage and have our license. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think there's a lot of myths out there about having your license and investing. I think some of the gurus, the investor gurus kind of perpetuate those myths a little bit too, because they want get rich quick right you can do this fast make money you don't, don't have to buy go your through. license give me the money yeah exactly exactly um so there's some myths out there that i think um kind of are perpetuated um uh i have to show comps to the seller if i'm a real estate license that's not true only if you would offer to represent them mm-hmm. do you have to show them comps um i have to disclose i'm an agent who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I think I, it, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. If if you're thinking that way, like you got your own problems of what you're trying. Why to Why are you here. trying to hide it? They I don't. Mean, they yeah. don't. I mean, I've never had someone think twice about it mm-hmm. or disclose that we're a real estate brokerage yeah. or an agent, and yeah. then they say, "Sorry, you know, we don't yeah. want to talk to you anymore." Agents, ugh, get out of here. Yeah. No. Or they don't want to list. You know, they called an investor and beautiful house no distressed why are, why are you calling an investor like i'm not going to pay you as much as you're going to get on the open market mm-hmm. oh well, a realtor told me that i'd have to paint before i list or um the commissions are so high it's a good opportunity to just dispel those those myths and i don't care what your house looks if we price it right i'll list it right i don't you don't have to paint for me mm-hmm. so um yeah i think it gives us extra credibility too I, i've had people 
say that they've called me specifically because they saw that I was licensed, even though they know I'm trying to buy the house. Um, sometimes I've gotten calls where they see, you know, maybe I've put it on my marketing, like a little disclosure. I'm a licensed real estate agent. And they're like, I don't want to list my house. And we're like, good, I don't want to list it either. I want to buy it, you know. So you can kind of get around all that stuff. It's never been a hindrance. If anything, it's helped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, and like, you know, we always preach too, is that if, you know, it's just an extra tool to mm -hmm. have with you when you are approaching, yeah. you know, sellers or anybody. And mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have it, you do forego that opportunity to make that extra income for sure. deals that you wouldn't buy as yeah. an investor. Leads are expensive, hard to come by, especially these days. So mm -hmm. monetize everyone. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't blame it all on the investor gurus. I mean, the, the realtor community does a pretty good job of dis discouraging realtors from participating in the market mm -hmm. as well, um, which I don't, I don't love that. I like to be the counter voice um, to that opinion. Um, realtors, I think, I mean, we do have to be careful. We don't, you know, but in any kind of business, you can get sued. Um, so I think you just act with a high level of honesty and integrity, do your best, treat people right. And, uh, hopefully you won't get sued. <laughs> Amen to that. But even when you do, they'll, they'll still sue you sometimes. But, um, yeah, but I, I do think it's a disservice to realtors that our professional organizations are so discouraging of them to really use their expertise and the tools they have on hand to, to build wealth for themselves. I really think that why not? You're supposed to be an expert in this field and you're not going to use it to better yourself. So, yeah. um, I really believe that, that we should shift that opinion. Mm. Yeah. I was actually just on a podcast and she's like, why do you think that lenders and realtors don't own properties? And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, to put it simply is probably because they don't want to, <laughs> right? I mean, like yeah. they can, but they're, they'd rather go on a vacation once a year than buy a property once a year. Oh, uh, I try wow. to make things as simple as that, right? Yeah, I, mean, I suppose so. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, anybody can buy real estate. Right. You make the sacrifices and, uh -huh. and you know this better than anyone. And that's what I think is really cool about your brokerage because, uh -huh. you know, similar mindsets as us is mm -hmm. you want to promote entrepreneurs and yeah. go do whatever you want and yeah. make money on every aspect of real estate, which mm. I really, really do believe it's very, very rare uh, with brokerages. Yes. I agree. Yeah, you you and I are definitely a breed of our own. I honestly don't know of any other companies that like at least talk about it yeah. like that much. Yeah, that, that say that. Well, hey, if somebody is doing off market stuff, they're not paying us our broker fees. Yeah. So if your livelihood depends on those broker fees, then you certainly don't want your agents spending time doing off market mm -hmm. um, stuff. But I always tell my agents whether you close something with me or not having you a part of the brokerage is a benefit to everybody, mm -hmm. whether you bring some expertise or, um, you know, leads or whatever it is, you know, everybody's got something Anything. to, they're, everybody's got something to offer. Even if they're walking around with Stepstone mm -hmm. on them, you know, that's a benefit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and sure. you probably, I would imagine our style doesn't lose agents that often, mm -hmm. right? Because the other yeah. way it's like, Oh, I can't do this. Okay. I can't yeah. do this. Okay. All right. Now I'm done. Right. And so we have a good setup where we can have yeah. agents for life yeah. because we're really yeah. supporting whatever they want to do. For sure. And, and letting agents, I think agents um, get in a position where they feel like they're an employee and nobody wanted when they got their license to be somebody's employee. Yep. Um, you know, they really want to be out there doing their own thing. And then they end up getting all these, you know, you have to do this desk duty and you have to do phone duty and where's your production and you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, man, I got my license to have a little bit of, yeah. uh, you know, control over my life and not have a job. Um, I've also seen some brokers that aren't super supportive of their agents and they treat them a little bit more like employees and you owe me this or that. I see my agents as my customers. It's my job to take care of them. Um, and so I think, uh, that's, that's done well for us. Cause I think our agents feel really appreciated and, and respected. Yeah. We, when, whenever we have something come up, uh, agent asks something, I'm like, well, let's just find out what makes them happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really? I mean, we lead with that. Yeah. Um, and that's a good mindset, but that's, I, I love y'all's approach and would maybe like to talk a little bit more about that because, uh -huh. uh, and it's interesting because, and you probably feel the same way. Like we're happy to promote your brokerage. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't by any means say that we're competing yeah. with you, with anyone. Right. Like if, if you want to hear about your brokerage, like we're going to talk about it and promote it. Um, cause it's long-term thinking. Yes. And that's ba back to like how we run our brokerage mm -hmm. and how we run our business and how we do deals in general. Yeah. 
things work out better when you think like that. When you work together and collaborate, yeah. there's enough for everybody to go around. I mean, even though we have similar philosophies, there's still going to be differences between our brokerages. Absolutely. And there's brokerages come in every flavor and style and people got to pick what's best for them. And um, so it's good that there's some some variety out right. there and some options. Sell us on Stepstone. Like, oh, well, okay. So, why, you know, I'm a brand new agent. Like, <laughs> yeah. what's the conversation you have with somebody? Like, you know. Right, yeah. Well, um, yeah, good question. So, um, you know, Stepstone, we really pride ourselves on, on, we say we have three cornerstones or promises that we offer to our agents. And the number one is freedom. Um, our agents really appreciate that freedom. Like I was saying earlier, a lot of, uh, brokerages treat their their agents like employees and um, most of the agents that came to us it's because they want to be involved in that creative real estate space and create wealth for themselves um, and and when when I really opened Stepstone up for other people to join not just me and my buddies it was because I kept hearing stories of my broker won't let me list my own property my broker won't let me wholesale um, my broker won't let me do this, my you know, and I'm like, man, I didn't even know this because I've always been independent and uh, realizing that brokers are really hamstringing the efforts of these folks who got their license a lot of times to to help their investing strategies. And so with us, um, and, and sometimes people don't want to be a realtor full time, you know, or they got family things or, um, you know, so, so with us, you can come over and kind of craft your own path, be an entrepreneur. Anybody who is an entrepreneur, they don't want another boss. I'm not trying to be people's bosses. I'm here to, you know, provide them a brokerage home that's going to allow them to um, be an entrepreneur and, and focus on what excites them uh, and interests them. So freedom, no desk duty, no phone duty. You can practice in creative real estate. You can do retail if you want to, um, you know, really just just pursue your interests and we're going to support you in that. Um, the third promise or the second promise is support. Um, you know, back, back then, you know, kind of when I opened it up, I realized that you either had a real traditional brokerage that was going to hamstring your, your efforts with your creative real estate investing, um, or your other option was to just go to one of those like flat fee, like sh small flat fee, don't ever call me, do what you want to. And that's not good either, especially when you're an agent that is practicing, um, on your own behalf as a principal, you need somebody who's going to be able to talk to you about disclosure and agency rules, um, or just, you know, agents need support sometimes, especially if you're a brand new agent. So, um, my first and foremost goal is to be available to my agents, which is fine with me. Cause I love that the most, you know, it's much better than sitting behind the desk. I'd love to talk to you about your deal or help you problem solve or deal with a conflict or something like that. So, um, as a broker, it's really important for me to be available to my agents. Um, so support is another big piece of what we offer. And we've got other, you know, CE classes, training classes, back office stuff, you know, stuff like that to support our agents. Um, and then the third promise is um, community. And this is what I'm most excited about. This, I didn't plan it. I don't think I could have created it like this if I had if I'd wanted to, but we have got just an awesome group of agents. Um, I think everybody that comes over to Stepstone Realty before I accept them for sponsorship, I'm going to have a talk with them and let them know that we expect a high level of honesty and integrity. Um, if you show that that's not you, if you're not a team player, we will kick you out. I haven't done it a lot, but I've done it a few times because I'm really protective over that. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, all the agents that have come over to us, they're just so cooperative. They collaborate, they trade deals, they lend money to each other. There's, there's, you know, we're all kind of fishing in the same pond a lot of times, but there's not that competition or backbiting or nastiness that sometimes I see in other communities, whether it be investor, investor groups or, um, brokerages. And so, um, we've got just a really deep, deep, um, pocket of expertise in all different kinds of fields. And they're all just happy to, to share what they know and, and learn from each other and teach each other. And, mm -hmm. um, I love our agents. I think we've got a great family. Heck yeah. And yeah. It, it starts at the top and I'm glad I asked cause it's a cool answer. Yeah. Um, and do you think that and obviously, you know, I don't think that a brokerage that only does retail is bad by any means. Yeah. It's like you said, there it's good to have tons of options. Right. Do you think that they don't uh, 
it's my opinion that they don't want to allow people to do a bunch of different things mm -hmm. because they're not really training on these things. But you guys right. are, right? You're you're teaching how to do these things right. the right way. Yeah. So that's why you're not scared to open that up. I think so. And I think that's a big reason why brokers really don't want their agents to participate in the creative side because mm -hmm. honestly, they don't understand it themselves. And if you're supposed to be supervising somebody and they're doing something that you don't fully grasp, that's going to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, but um, I've had one foot on the retail and one foot on the creative side my entire career. So I understand both sides really, really well. And so um, it's that. And of course, off market stuff doesn't bring you broker fees. So uh, yeah. so I think it's, it's multiple reasons. But yeah, there's something for everybody and some agents want just the retail stuff and the stuff that those retail only brokerages can offer and um that's great we're here for the folks that are um, a little bit more entrepreneurial minded and want to invest and participate in the creative side of real estate even if you're not an investor now but you're kind of interested in it or you at least want the option we don't do anything that you know of course go re do retail like of, you know of course like make money where you can um and so folks can come over and, and be around people that are doing the things they're interested in and surround themselves with that kind of support and education and stuff so even if you're not an investor or consider yourself an investor that doesn't mean that you can't come to stepstone um but again what are your goals and if that is your goal to get into that kind of uh side of real estate then be around people who encourage and support that mm -hmm. What percentage of realtors do you think understand wholesaling and hard money? What percentage? Like I'm, and I only the reason I said those two things is uh, like I'm thinking creative type stuff. Yeah, yeah, ten percent maybe. Yeah, I agree. That's okay. I, that's, that, I'm not, I, not there's a not lot. an exact answer. I, yeah. I just think the same thing, uh -huh. and it blows my mind that even people that are very successful and have done it for a long time, yeah. they're like, I have no idea what hard money is, and I'm like, right. man, that. I'm not necessarily saying you have to learn it, but I do feel like you should have you a should. basic understanding. Yeah. Even if you're not doing it, like to be a good professional, right. it seems a little weird. Because you're scared of the don't... unknown, right? If you don't understand something, then you're going to be scared of it and avoid it. And that's really a disservice to your clients. Yeah, because you could or... get them to use hard I mean, hard money can be a great It's a great uh, tool. A tool, yeah. yeah. Or they think things are... Um, illegal you know dan teaches our sub two class and so many people think oh that's illegal and uh you know the do on sell clause is illegal you can't do you know all this kind of ideas and myths out there but um and you know one thing i think is sad is um realtors that do not know these creative things don't know how to help people in distress you know they want the beautiful houses that are staged and photographed and that's great you know to help those people sell their houses but man you know you can really help people if you know how to help mm. people avoid foreclosure or they're in a distressed situation or whatever their situation is it's you know that's i think we can provide a high, higher level of service by being familiar with those creative creative techniques because then we can help people that really need us and mm -hmm. and i think it's sad that you know some realtors will just walk away from that and not not have anything to do with it and that's really when you can make a difference in someone's life so um i think you're obviously going against the grain in a lot of ways with Mm -hmm. and, and that's cool like I like being different yeah have you felt any like pushback from the realtor community or negativity um, that's like hey yeah. Angie like <laughs> you're you're uh, making uh, things difficult Has that right been a thing? um not a lot some. I guess you could say some you know I think because uh, I could see like yeah people like not even necessarily agents but mm -hmm. like um like people on boards and stuff being against this yeah i can see that right right no i agree i agree we did submit um we tried to get a designation with tar for our creative uh, what we're gonna call it some sort of creative real estate designation or something like that we we're gonna teach them and they were like no no we're not doing that why is that why do you think uh, i think it's just because they don't want to encourage that kind of behavior with realtors it's so weird, uh, even phrasing yeah. it like that. Encourage that type of behavior. Yeah, um, I mean, what I don't, I don't. All right. That's how I got brought up into real estate. Yeah. Was I've only bought in properties with hard money initially, uh -huh. right? I've only you know came in wholesaling deals, came in with rentals and investments, yeah. and 
that was my upbringing. That's all mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. And, it, uh, you know, I just don't understand what's so negative. It's a little, yeah, it's it's just not the norm as far as what we're taught. Although Trek has, has a, you know, approved several of our, you know, we've got a whole host of CE classes that are all investor topics that Trek has approved. And I think it's important for realtors, whether they're going to participate themselves in the creative side to be familiar because you can help your investors. Like if you're trying to work with an investor and you don't know what hard money is, um, that investor is not going to take you seriously. I think, uh, you know, the real, you know, the typical retail realtors think an investor is somebody who's going to buy a rental property with 20% down in a traditional loan, but there's so many other ways we know that you can mm-hmm. invest in real estate. So, um, so I'm glad that we're putting those CE classes out there and starting to br- shed some light on, on this stuff. But, um, you know, not, I think, I don't think anybody's going to outright say like, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I definitely think that that, you know, I probably get a little bit of that. I'm on some, you know, Facebook boards or something and I'll put like a comment or, you know, a counter argument to some stuff sometimes. And I've seen those threads get shut down a few times. Well, you're probably, uh, you're definitely the same way. Like I enjoy being in that position. Right. Like I want to be Uh different and thinking outside of the box, asking questions. Yeah. And if I'm not, I don't feel right. Right. I don't like being, uh, you know, in a straight line with everyone else going uh-huh. all the same direction. Yeah. I hate that. Well, you know, we call ourselves the black sheep, right? That's our little uh, mascot that we proudly, nice. uh, cool. proudly, uh, our golf tournament's called the black sheep oh, yeah, open. That's right. that's yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, we, so you embrace it. We embrace it. We really do. You know, those early years when we were recruiting people and they were talking to us about the frustrations they were having with their brokerage over and over again, they'd be like, I'm the black sheep in my office. I'm the black sheep in my office. And we're like, Okay, we're all black sheep over here, so come on over. Uh, yeah, we feel yeah. the same way. I'm like, we got a ragtag, ragtag group, including me right. and Alex. Like, yeah, we're all just you know good, uh, good people. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the key, right? Like, oh yeah, for sure. What you nailed on was integrity, mm-hmm. honesty. Like, if yeah. you have those things mm-hmm. at your core, yeah, the rest is like. Go, go do whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. just do things. The and right again, way. we're helping people. We're helping people in a space that a lot of other people or a lot of tra- t- uh, traditional realtors aren't able to help people yeah. with. And I think that, that, and I've that's had huge. Complain, I've had somebody complain that they're like, you're acting like you're the owner. You don't own the property. And mm-hmm. Trek sent me a message. I said, well, here's my contract that says and or signs. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you're good. Uh-huh. And it, I've always felt back on do things the right way and right. you're fine. And I've seen mm-hmm. what people get in trouble for with, mm-hmm. at Trek and it's pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, you know, stealing hundreds of thousands. Like uh-huh. that's where you're obviously going right. wrong. Not, yeah. not by trying to be creative yeah. and think different than people. Oh yeah, for sure. Just make sure you're doing it right and treating people right and you're not scamming people. And I mean, if that's what you're doing, whether you've got a license or not, you're not going to survive in this business. It's You're going to flame out pretty quickly as soon as everybody starts to get your number. So mm-hmm. um, I don't, uh, yeah. So to me, it, whether you have a license or not, just act right. Just act right. Mm-hmm. Well, and it, it's not, I'm sure there's a stigma about investors or, you know, what both of, you know, all three of uh-huh. us do uh, in terms of being licensed real estate agents and buying properties at discounts. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, the I've never had a seller disappointed at the closing table. Have yeah. you? Oh. You know? Yeah, no. I mean, they're happy. They want to sell it. We're helping them out. Oh, Obviously, yeah. we need a, you know, a good deal to, to buy it. Yeah. But they're getting a good deal on their end as well. And we're helping them and solving mm-hmm. their problems. And yeah. we ain't forcing anyone to sign anything. No. Yeah. And it really is a problem solving. You know, that's what the gurus or whatever, what is the person's problem and solve it. And, mm. uh, you know, sometimes that's get my car out of impound. <laughs> I've done that before. You know? Right. Oh, you want to sell your house? That's your stressor is getting your house, you know? Okay. So here's my price. Plus I'll get your car out of impound or whatever it is, you know, get a U-Haul for you. Or and sometimes these, these problems get so big for people to, to take on themselves that if you can just figure out what their needs are, what their stressors are, and you can help them with that. You can make a good deal. It's helping the communities, you know, mm-hmm. or neighborhoods with foreclosed houses or, you know, distressed, nasty looking houses. It's not helping anybody in the community either. Mm-hmm. 
So it's a, I think we, we provide a very important service, but unfortunately creative real estate investors do get a bad rap. So, um, so Stepstone, we really do want to raise the bar as to our behavior, how people see creative real estate investors and agents and, um, our tagline are on our logo is bringing real estate forward because we really do want to push the bar forward and, and, uh, create a different perception of creative real estate investors. When Dan started investing way back when his parents were like, what kind of scam are you running? What kind of unscrupulous stuff are you into? Why did Dan? I, say that? You... I think, well, that was 15 years ago. So it was before maybe even longer than 15 years ago. It was before, you know, all the flip shows and, you know, it just was not a very well known thing. You know, when he started the RIA meeting, such as it now, it's something entirely different, but I think it was like, 15 guys in a circle drinking coffee like that's that was the investor group in in austin and uh so it's changed a lot you know it's a little bit more well known but i still think that creative real estate investors kind of are looked at as like oh you're still in people's houses or mm -hmm. equity or whatnot so i still think they have a little bit of a bad I reputation i guess it's just people have a uh, limited education they're mm -hmm. they're not open to thinking about things and yeah anybody that's like doing big things like if you mm -hmm. were thinking like billionaires and stuff like this they do all kinds of creative stuff that yeah. it, a small minded person would be like oh that's uh -huh. no, that's no no i'm not gonna yeah. do this hostile takeover or right. whatever <laughs> that's business you know? yeah i would say it's rarely a hostile situation no, just, when we're buying a house i'm just stuff, giving an yeah. example of gotcha. like that's at the highest end billionaires mm -hmm. doing this kind of yeah. stuff and there's these people that just get limited in their mindset uh -huh. and they just don't realize what's actually going on right. and you're not forcing things yeah and that's why the integrity and all that matters so right. much right oh, it's yeah. just it's just problem solving it really is no it matter is. i mean whether it's real estate or the billionaires or mm -hmm. jeff bezos and amazon it's just you get paid proportionally to the <laughs> yeah size of it's the problem i'm just saying like <laughs> people could like look at what bezos is doing and uh -huh. like forget about like his status and all that and be like oh gosh that is that's wrong mm -hmm. but this is like the top level capitalist in the system you yeah know? that's how these things work right yeah yeah I crazy mean, world out there so what i'm, I'm curious because when you said 15 guys uh i know female oh the, i guess like yeah that was probably mis well, not no, no, as no. many females but though. the reason i asked is mm -hmm. like being a female in the business yeah um and been doing it for a long time and having mm -hmm. your own brokerage that's rare yeah. right yeah. There's probably not that many. Uh, well, the there's females, a lot of female yeah. agents, but yeah. not own brokerages. Right, um, right. And coming up through that and seeing mm -hmm. the changes, like, did you see challenges like breaking into the industry on that level? I'm sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, I think that any woman in a, a position of you know having uh, come up in her career, I guess, is going to experience some of that. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a boys' club with the. In That's why real asked. estate. And yeah, I remember specifically one time, uh, uh, me and Dan met with uh, one of. She was my agent at the time. She's not with me anymore, but I still love her. Dana Ams. Do you know Dana? I don't know Dana. Uh, she is just the most brilliant designer. I love her. We partnered on her with so many different things. Well, she bought one house, remodeled it, and then she bought the house down the street. Um, she got bored, you know, after she did the one, it was the same floor plan. She's like, I just don't want to do the same floor plan again. So we brought over a guy, um, that we thought might buy the house down the street from her. So we were just kind of helping put some pieces together. Me and Dan didn't have any ownership interest in the, we just knew the potential buyer. And so we showed him the house that she remodeled, which was of course, just on point every bit of it because she's just brilliant and so to give them an idea like okay these are what she did to this same floor plan you can do some stuff you know different down there but just to give you an idea showed it all to him and so the guy was like okay dan let's go outside and talk about it <laughs> wow <laughs> me and dana are like dana owns the house <laughs> she's the one that bought and remodeled this house. we're just here for fun but yeah go ahead go talk to dan whatever <laughs> So, um, you know, I think there's still some of that, but, you know, I don't know if that's a, a career thing or just a, a problem with that particular well, man. <laughs> this is a random story, but we had someone on our podcast and after the podcast ended, she told us how someone beat her up at the house and I'm like, oh, wow. man, this is crazy. You yeah. just can't, you don't hear about that often, but yeah. you do hear about it right. and it happens. Yeah. Um, that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. And it just, she's like, seemed like a totally normal guy. Right. Been with him like five or seven times showing houses and all of a sudden he snapped. He just beat her up. Mm hmm. 
Wow. I've not had that happen to me. And it's like, Thank goodness. this guy had like, he was already pre-approved. He had all <laughs> his documents in. He's like, yeah. she got out. Like she yeah. like ran out and then he, I'm sure he got arrested. Yeah. Uh, she had his driver's license. That's and terrible. Everything. Yeah. But it's not things that, that I think about as a guy. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't worry don't about, about that. that. I'm sure it could happen and obviously people can beat me up, but like right. it's a different world. I'll take you on in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to mess with you. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, I think uh, being a woman in business, there's always going to be those challenges, but I just don't let it, I don't let it get to me. If yeah. somebody's got a problem with uh, that, it's a personal problem and not my problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can have challenge like we can have challenges for being young. And, yeah, you know, like, sure. Yeah, you definitely. I had uh, one time, uh, I had an ag- a new agent come over and she was um, an old, probably, I was going to say older, she's probably my age to be honest. Um, and when we get a brand new agent, we'll hook them up with one of our more seasoned agents who are also seasoned investors and whatnot. So I've got this um, woman in Dallas, her name's Erica Butler. I'll give you a shout out, Erica. She is awesome. She's so smart. Her and her husband are killing it and they're young though. And so I set her up to be the captain for this older woman. And later the older woman called and she's like, this just isn't going to work. She's just too young. She just can't even comprehend. And I'm like, you are missing out because, you know, she is killing it. You're doing nothing. You know, maybe you can learn something from her. But I was, yeah, there's, there's definitely a youth issue too. I mean, I feel it. People are like, Angie, you're so young. And uh, (laughs) I don't know if I can take you seriously. (laughs) Hey, you got to use things to your strength. Right. And um, you're still hustling and getting after it. And what I tell our agents is like, yeah, you may be young, but, you you got the work ethic and oh, the hustle yeah. and that goes a long way. The energy. Yeah, the energy. <laughs> I don't I don't think it really matters. You know, like it's so. just like buying, you know, properties. It's just solving yeah. problems if, you know, that door doesn't open because mm-hmm. I'm twenty six years old, whatever, this door over yeah. here will. Yeah. You just don't let it slow you down and you just keep going. You gotta you can, yeah. You can go sulk in the corner if you want. Yeah. But. You're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna have learning opportunities. And so there is something to be gained with you know experience and age but you you know you can't get there without going through the slog and learning that stuff yourself so um somebody who's willing to make those mistakes and try is going to get a lot further than somebody who's just gonna think i'm too young to pull that off or i'm too scared or whatever so um you know it's People are like sad about getting old and I'm like, it's better than the alternative, right? So you got to get through those learning yeah. experiences. And there's different stages of life. And I'm curious because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of at a different stage now with having two kids and stuff. Yeah. Do you feel as if like you're less motivated in some ways than when you first started or is it mm-hmm. just different? Because I'm starting... I'm not less motivated, but I'm starting to think about that. Like cause yeah. priorities, right. right? It's like, well, maybe I'd rather go to the park with my kids and go yeah. cold call right now it is yeah it's a challenge and a balance especially when you have younger kids um i think that my life is a little easier now that my son's older and i don't have those pressures in fact he pretty much cooks dinner for me every night now well so done. i know right yeah i have to get the hello fresh stuff but I, he gets the directions and the food and he cooks it. So, um, you know, so I don't know if I've lost motivation, but you definitely start to appreciate the, the time off and the need to, especially when you run your own business. Um, it's very easy to get really caught up in it and forget, you know, the personal kind of becomes the professional and they, it bleeds together, especially you and Lexi are in business mm-hmm. together, right? So mm-hmm. you're just like, where does one end and one begin? So I think that's probably. <laughs> I've never done that on a podcast. <laughs> that's probably my biggest challenge is really trying to craft a personal, you know, keep keep a actual personal life mm-hmm. and not let it not let it bleed in. But um, it know. changes too, right? Like you know, day one you don't have any rental properties that are paying mm-hmm. you cash flow. You don't have a real yeah. estate brokerage that's profitable every single month you don't have all these things working right yeah and you did all those things on day one to get to that point to where you didn't have to Mm -hmm. work 18 hours every single day the hustle changes yeah Yeah, there's no more garage sales yeah but now you know i might be locked to my computer you know i'm still hustling it just looks two hundred thousand dollar deals yeah yeah. it just looks a little different but yeah it's uh, a it's a different level i mean that's the goal right yeah it is the goal but don't get caught up in in the business you know i think 
I think that's hard, especially for men, um, you know, trying to balance. Well, it's really hard for women, I'm sure, but trying because you're supposed to be the breadwinner and you're supposed to be out there, you know, bring it in a lot of it. You know, even though Dan and I were in business together for a long time, I always kind of felt like ultimately he's going to, you know, he's going to pull us through. So you have that kind of pressure on your, Mm. on your shoulders. But, um, if you blink, man, they grow up really fast. So just be real careful, you know, to make sure that you're, you know, carving out that time, um, to make sure that you're appreciating it because they won't remember your hustling. They'll remember the time you were there. Yeah. It's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, I think about it all the time and I try to bring it up and be like, Hey, Let's just remember like to slow down and yeah. enjoy this. And it's also, I feel like uh, a lot of times easy to look back and somewhat romanticize like, uh-huh. oh man, things are like amazing in college. Yeah. It's like, well, actually I had no money and <laughs> hated class. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, uh, just try to, be, I think the biggest uh-huh. thing you can do in life is live in the presence. Yeah. Cause that's all you have. Um, mm-hmm. and, and just, you know, try yeah. to do the best you can and be proud of what you're doing and hustle and grind sure. and have fun, experiment. Yeah. Yeah, but don't let life take over totally. your work. Totally. Yeah. Cuz there's there is never enough money. No. You know? Yeah, you know, my dad said that. I quit I quit college. Um <laughs> I did not finish college, which I hate. I sh- I should go back one of these days. I had one maybe one semester, maybe two semesters. I was in such a hurry to get back to Texas that I thought, well, I'll just transfer. Anyway, long story, I didn't finish and my dad when I told him I was going to drop out and get a job, He's like, Angie, don't do it. And I'm like, I'll go back to college. I'll, I'll promise to. Nope, nope. You're just going to grow into your income. You'll never want to go back. You'll, you know, you just, you think you make enough and then you're making that much and you're like, I can't, you know, it's never enough money, right? You always need more. You're always going I've to grow into that, that income. I've never grow into the income. I like that. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. I like to not do that. Yeah. Yeah. You get that? Which you, like. You make more money and then your life kind of expands. Your so you're really not making expand. more money. Yeah, you don't have like, to. Warren, Warren Buffett still, yeah. still eats at McDonald's. Yeah. He still drives a Toyota. Still lives in his, you know, $100,000 house. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe Warren should maybe treat himself to like a Chick-fil-A you're, or something. <laughs> if, so he, for he me. Does. I've, I've, I've seen his house and I'm like, yeah, he probably still owns I, that. But he's, he's probably in a... Uh, yeah, you know, Spain right now. But yeah, for so for Warren, I guess his businesses grow with his income, and uh-huh. for us, or at least for me, it's yeah. the real estate grows. Every single penny that comes in, it's not going to a mm-hmm. Mercedes or a right, downtown right. condo or to yeah. a trip to Hawaii. Yeah. It's yeah, how well, that's much true, more real estate? The bigger your business gets, the more obligations that you have. Like when Dan and I first started, you know, we didn't have any employees and. Now we've got employees and health insurance and people that are counting on us, um, office expense, you know, so as your business grows, you may make more money, but you've got a lot more expenses Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. But that's been, I will say that is one of the most um, satisfying things that I've, I've been able to do is give people jobs and, and health insurance. And, um, that, that makes me really proud to be able to do that. We had one of our agents yesterday. Um, she said like, if, if I didn't know you guys and I didn't meet you, I'd still be doing what I was doing as full-time uh-huh. job. And I was like, yeah. that's really cool to hear. Yeah. She's like, I just, I trusted you guys to know that y'all have my back mm-hmm. to make that leap. And yeah. it's like, we're changing people's lives. Isn't that fantastic? It is. It I really that. is. I mean, yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that gets you excited about what you, what you have going on? Like, Building it, growing it, what what kind of gets you fired up? It's, I mean, it's it's the community. I love the people that I work with, and they are, um, they're just supportive, and it's really like you know a family. It's really these people just mean so much to me. And then sometimes things will happen, and I realize how much I mean to them. And um, uh, yeah, it's just, um, and you know, uh, that and helping people that are in dire straits get out of it you know as far so as far as the brokerage goes it's it's having that community that i built um they were all like-minded and and they're just all supportive and i'm just really proud of of who they are and and how how we're reflected in the community um on the other side the investing side i I really you probably realized i'm kind of a helper personality from my previous careers and stuff and um so helping people in bad situations that that 
that gives me a lot of uh, pleasure. I'll be the one that sits there and cries with somebody. Mm -hmm. If they're, I don't know if you cry with people, but you know, you sit there and you hear these sad stories and they're losing their house. I'm going to be the one crying with them. Mm -hmm. Dan's the one looking at the map and the, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, it takes I'm gonna cry with you got to sympathize. I'm just like, what are all the solutions? Yeah. And that's probably Let me fix it maybe a you. guy thing, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But I always just jump to what, what are the answers? So. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a fun business. We're in a great market, um, and it's exciting to see you guys growing. Thank you. We want to support you any way we can. Likewise. Um, what are ways that maybe we or other people can add value for you uh, and your company? Oh man. Well, I mean, this is great. You know, bringing us bring us on to your to your podcast. You got a great uh, uh, presence. Um, we've talked about this. So how we're getting old, you know, we need to bring some of that youth energy. Um, yeah, we're not that old. Jeez. Like <laughs> being around y'all makes, what are y'all like 25 or something? I'm 29. He's 20, 26. 26. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My son's like 24, but I had him really young in my, in my excuse. I'm really not that old. Age is just a number. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't feel I'm about to be 30. Yeah. And like, I remember when I thought 30 was old, I know, you know, like, right? oh man, I feel weird. I'm 30. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, it doesn't seem as old when you get there. Then you're like, oh, that's nothing. You're right. I'm like, yeah. I don't feel like I'm 30. That's nothing. I read something the other day that 2050 is as far away as 1990 was. Is that right? Interesting. Yeah. Put it in perspective. When people say like 1990 is vintage, I'm like, vintage. I'm like, I was in high school. That doesn't seem, well, no, that's not right yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, it's exciting. Uh, but that's what's cool about mm -hmm. real estate is you can play the long game. Mm -hmm. and you can do this forever. So right? many, There's yeah. There's nothing that prevents you from doing this for the So next. many avenues, so many options. There's just not one box. And I think that's what's great about our brokers is we don't try to pigeonhole people into you do this for us and that's it. You know, really let people kind of explore their own interests mm -hmm. and, and we want to support that. And you guys are in Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, Corpus. Corpus. Nice. Corpus too. Yeah. I love Corpus. You love I love Corpus. to visit Corpus. Yeah. Yeah. I went to school there for four years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're kind of growing in Corpus. I think we're up to about six agents. We had one agent there for years, but um, she's a very experienced investor. Has been there for a long time, so she kind of held her own down there. But yeah, it's kind of so I got growing started. Market I got the us. rookie of the year. Oh, yeah. is that right? 2011 in Corpus. Yeah. yeah. 2011 rookie of the year well i was always rookie of the year because i was like only agent for stepstone <laughs> for so i was like the rookie of the year and the salesperson nice. of the year and yeah you had plaques on the wall oh yeah get them made now <laughs> it was a it was a good experience there um that's awesome yeah well that's... and i'm impressed that you know it's not every day you meet another broker that's as young as you are and that's got similar viewpoints on mm -hmm. how real estate should be done so yeah it was it's cool. really exciting it was cool hearing about you guys because uh -huh. um I, I just i don't know anyone else that does it like you do and yeah. i feel like we do, we have the same mindset with it yeah it's like when you like when i um met D dusty con do you know dusty he does a lot of short sales and you know you meet so like nobody likes short sales but i've listed hundreds of short sales and then he's done it. And so it's like when you meet somebody and you're like, oh, you're a, sh you're a short sell person too. You know, <laughs> like, you know, it's like you uh, have that special connection with people that are a little. That was unique. the best. My first best deal. Uh, my mom bought it and uh -huh. it was a short sale. Uh -huh. It was in Corpus, close to the water, listed at like 220. And I got it for 115. Yeah. And it was worth 190 all day. And I was yeah. like. Uh, you know, I was blessed that my mom paid for school uh -huh. and I was like, Hey mom, uh, I just paid you back on that deal. <gasps> wow. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. Like, you just made 80 K. So yeah. we'll Isn't call it even. Something? Not really, yeah. but I just messed with her on that. Right. Right. I'm sure she appreciated oh, that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. She was probably thinking she could have got it down to 99. <laughs> Is that your mom? She's probably. like, man, I could have done better. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> what probably. does your mom do? Um, so she worked at an asphalt and a uh, paving company. Okay. She was an estimator for striping, like the oh, okay. fire lanes mm -hmm. and all that. And she right. did that for 20 years. And all along the way, she was buying properties. That's, okay. That's kind of what so you came got up me introduced with that. to. It. Yeah. yeah. When we did our first uh, golf tournament, we did a charity golf tournament. You can bring me back next 
August or something. We can sure. talk about the golf tournament. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, the first one we did, we did for a company called Venture Labs. Um, they're in San Antonio and they provide entrepreneurship education for kids. And what they told That's us, cool. yeah, it was a really cool organization. One of the things the guy told us is the number one indicator of somebody being an entrepreneur is that they had somebody that they grew up with that was an entrepreneur. So, um, so your mom having done that, you know, probably was a big influence. Dan's dad was a, uh, owned his own business. So I think that's kind of where he got it from. And so I thought that was just really interesting, mm-hmm. um, that we can kind of be an example for kids to show them, yeah. you know, what, what's possible out there. And honestly, like, uh, I mean, obviously we, we do get things out of this podcast, but we don't mm-hmm. know how to measure it. Yeah. Uh, but that's a big part of why we do this is uh-huh. like, we're just passionate about it and yeah. we believe in getting that message out there. Yeah. Like, Nobody's paying us right now to do this. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure, we'll get benefits, but we're not yeah. we're not even like trying to count that. Yeah. But we love to show people what's possible. Right. And, and we have people all the time, yourself included, that were like uh, just built things from nothing. Uh-huh. And it's like proof that anything can be done. You yeah. Know, we've had people on here that are legal citizens that own mm-hmm. multiple properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, single mom, mm-hmm. raised my brother and I. I st- I'm still kind of confused on how she did this <laughs> uh, with me raising two kids with a wife. Yeah. And she worked a full-time job, bought real estate, and raised my... And my brother and I were not easy to raise. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows. He was around us. M- more, so my right. bro- more so yeah. my brother. Uh-huh. Uh, but like anything's possible with this business. And that's what mm-hmm. is so cool. And it's... If you have this abundance mindset, yeah. you, you realize you can help people. You mm-hmm. can grow together. Yeah and just live life and have fun with it it's not a quick get rich quick thing though you gotta have fortitude and sacrifice sacrifice and hustle Mm. and um but when you get there and i'm i don't think i'll ever consider are you ever there right never but when it gets a little easier when the, there's a little bit more money, it's it's really satisfying to know that you did all that mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but it sure ain't easy. It's it's not easy. Um, so if you're in that boat, if you think it's a get rich quick, then go get a job. I think. But if you're if you're really willing to to work at it and you're passionate about it, then then there's nothing better in the world than having to having you know built something like that yourself. Yeah. If you want to do the get rich quick. Just go to Vegas, red or black. Go, yeah, red or black. Red or black. If you want to get crazy, go for the green. No, yeah. if you want to get crazy, go for the numbers. 31 to, 31 yeah, to 1 the odds. Double zero, the green. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, those, <laughs> that, well, that'll be the next podcast, how to get rich quick. You got to, yeah. Go I'll to Vegas, red one. or black. That's all it takes. <laughs> no, but yeah. thank you for coming on. Yeah, uh, we appreciate your time. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure to hear a little bit more. Thank you. And um, how can people find out about your company, how to get a hold of you, how to sure. join the team. Go to our, our website, stepstonetexas.com, spelled out, D-E-X-A-S, stepstonetexas.com. We've got a lot of CE classes, whether you're uh, an agent or uh, not an agent, you can still take the classes, um, but a lot of them um, are on uh, creative real estate techniques. Um, so come take the classes, watch our blog, sign up for the net, the newsletter. Yeah. All right. We love it. Thank yeah. you guys for tuning in to the Real Estate Podcast. Angie, thanks for coming. Thank you. Until next day. time. In Until October, October, right? Yes. No, wait. The August. golf tournament is September, September of every year. So let's talk like August, July or August. Get ready for the golf tournament next year. Black Sheep Open. It's so much fun. I'm not even lying. It's in Kyle, it's, uh, Plum Creek? Yeah, Plum Creek and Kyle. It's such a good tournament. Everybody has so much fun. I've been to other golf. So I hosted this. We put it on every year. We didn't do it this year, of course, because of obvious reasons. And then I've been a participant at golf tournaments. And I go there expecting something like what we do. And I'm sadly disappointed. I'm like, where are the games? Where are the drinks? Where's all the fun? Mm-hmm. It's not. No, Black Sheep Open is where it's at. All right. July, August next year? Yes. Cool. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.